How's it going? Actually, good morning, people. Good morning. I'm not, it's not how's it going because it's 7 a.m. I'm not even asking people at 7 a.m. how it's going. You know, it's, it's an hour earlier than we're usually recording. Big up Jordan. But we're here. We're back. Apologies for the delay, people. It should have come out yesterday, but I was off. So, yeah, people may be angry at me. But we're here. We've had a, a couple nights sleep to to take in the, the draw against Bayern Munich. And that's what we're here to discuss as well as touching in on the Aston Villa game this weekend. But I'm not lying. It is 7 a.m. Just so you don't know. Just so you don't can, know I say, can I say thank you very much, first of all, to all of you three. I really I really do appreciate it. I can't slag you off behind your backs now. All that talk behind your back. I have to, I have to stop it now because honestly, this is a, this is, you've done me a solid. You've done me a solid here. So I, I do appreciate it. I don't really, like, you can keep the thank you, man. I'd rather, I'd rather, I'd rather, I'd rather have this feeling that you know, this Jordan guy. Like, I don't want thank you. I don't want to feel like that. Yeah, you can, you can keep. Uh, no, I love you all. I love you all. So I, 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 appreciate, I appreciate it. I mean, eight AM for a lot of you guys is a stretch. So seven is 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 that's real love. That's real love. So um, let's hope Lee makes it through. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't worry, I'll carry you through. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting earlier yeah, and yeah, earlier, yeah. Lance. It's getting earlier and earlier. James, right. you good? Let's just go on with it. <laughs> Jordan, you see what you've done? This is going to be know. a grumpy ass podcast. I know, I know, I know. Right we didn't it's even win either as well. I know, sorry. <laughs> Forever grumpy, episode one of the new series. Um... <laughs> My eating ain't even clicked in yet. No, no, I have not even heard enough of that. Night. My eating ain't got up yet. I've got up before me eating. It's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but we are here, people. Hit the like button. Look, up bright and early on a Thursday morning to get this podcast out. Um, so hit the like button, thousand likes. Let's try and get it up there. Um, comment section, obviously, you know what to do already, people. And make sure you subscribe, notification bell on all of that good stuff. And let's get into it because there's quite a bit to discuss on the game. And quite a, well, a bit to discuss on the weekend is off the back of that game too, in terms of thoughts, lineups, and 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 how you would maybe protect or not protect players going into the second leg. But yeah, two two Bayern Munich wasn't the result any of us expected. I don't think it was the performance any of us expected. Um, but we're out of there with it all to play for. I guess is the best way to look at it. Um, who should we start with? I was there, but Lee, let, let's start with you as usual. Um, I know your general thoughts post game. Mm-hmm. I know your general thoughts yesterday after a night's sleep. Have they changed after a couple of nights sleep now, or still disappointed? Uh, I'm, you know, I'll be, I'll be honest. I'm glad we've done this pod probably a day later than normal because I've not been happy. I've been bloody disappointed. Um, I felt let down, if I'll be honest, from the defence. If, if if I really look at it, because they'd set they'd set me so high up. Um, the way they played on on Tuesday, you know, I had a big light. Um, Bumped down and probably a reminder of uh, Arsenal not quite the real deal yet, particularly in the Champions League. I think like on the night, if I look on it, I think the experience all round was too much. You know, I, I, I said yesterday that what was Raya's biggest game um, since coming to the Arsenal, and that was it. Though. I think that was it. Yeah. On on, on, on Tuesday and um, awful and an absolute nightmare. Um, you know, been brilliant for us the last few games and all that. But um, when it was the, the, the experience of that game, it cost us the first goal, in my opinion. It weren't just him, but category um, mistakes were made after that, before that, whatever way you want to look at it. After getting in front, and for me, I'm not like Ben White's been fantastic, but that was a tie there, 2 0. That was the tie. Um, game changer, as far as I'm concerned. And I'll tell you what, Ben White, um, I love him. If that was the Premier League game, he scores that. I think he just slots it in. I just think that, again, the occasion and everything like that was was not too big for us, but we're not experienced enough in it. And um, the way we defended for the second goal as well was was poor. And, and, and the, the one thing that's, I, I believe, and I, I don't know how you guys feel about this, and after the Brighton game, if you said to me, oh, do you think Arsenal can win the league? I said, yeah. If you, and you gave me, give me one reason why we can win it. I said, because of our defence. I think defensively we, we're solid. That performance from our defence was like the season before, towards the end of the season, when the pressure was on, they buckled. 
and there was pressure put on by Bayern Munich. Look, listen, that first goal, by the way, let's this this let's get it out there. You know, mistake by Gabriel, mistake by um give you a call started by um Raya. They still had some bloody good work to do to get that goal and they done it. And and that is the thing, like the standard of the finishing and, and the way that they opened us up was fantastic. Um I've watched it a few times. But even if you look at the, the Ben White goal, uh, sorry, the Ben White saving tackle. Mm. Saliba, been brilliant this season. If that's a league game, off his chest, onto his knee and plays. What's he do? It is their player and we're under pressure. There was, there was, we played a different game at times because even Saliba, Gabriel, didn't do the things they've been doing in the Premier League, like, you know, and maybe that was because of the opposition and whatever, like, you know. I felt that it was a missed opportunity. If I'll be really honest, it was a missed opportunity. Positives, the way we come back, um, two goals against a very, very good Champions League side should be enough to give you um, a victory. Um, as in all of the Champions League games, if I'll be very honest, apart from the Dortmund-Madrid game, very, very open, very... Um, you know, uh, leaky defences. So, you know, listen, we've still got a chance. But if I'll be really honest, I'm, I'm going to be honest about it. I, I felt that we needed to win mm. before the game. I felt we needed to be going to, to Germany with a with at least a goal advantage. To go there without any advantage, I think it's going to be a bridge too far for us, really, with the inexperience that we got. I, I, I look at us in the Premier League, we're experienced. We, we've learned from our mistakes last season. We, we haven't, Quite got to that level in in, the, in this competition yet, and it showed on on Tuesday night. Disappointing, but um, you know it it is what it is. Uh, I felt that we wasn't quite good enough on the night. I don't, I agree with everything you said, and I think we'll we'll delve into the moments in the game. Um, but overall thoughts, James. I haven't really spoken to you about it since. Yeah, I mean, what Lee said about it reminding us more of. Um... Arsenal last season and Arsenal this season, I don't think was just in our errors and our naivety. I actually think in our tactical approach to the game, mm. Arteta seemed to play it much more like last season's team than this season's team, which really surprised me. Big games this year, and this year I mean this calendar year, 2024, he played Man City, Liverpool and Newcastle. Let's use those games, for example, with Kivio started two of those and care and played the second half against Liverpool and the fullbacks were quite wide and Arsenal's build-up shape was in their set shape defensively and what that means is if we lost the ball everyone was where they needed to be against Bayern we were we were nothing like that we had Erdegaard dropping deep next to Jorginho to build up you had white overlapping Saka like you wouldn't believe Saka was tucking at times Kivio was overlapping and then Rice was trying to play the Xhaka role to get forward as well. So every time we lost the ball, it was Jorginho and Erdegaard having to recover. And I'm thinking, you don't want Jorginho and Erdegaard as your two trying to deal with Bayern's transitional threat. And sorry to get all nerdy and tactical about it, but it was such a bizarre approach because you could have played that exact same eleven. And this is not after the fact. I did a video on this. You could have played with Rice as the six, with Jorginho as the eight, like we did against Liverpool. Let Jorginho roam forward. And then you could have had Ben White tuck in like he did against West Ham. Now, it's the exact same players on the pitch, but at least when you lose possession, the you know Harry Kane's trying to counter on us with Rice and White around mm, him. Really and it makes a big difference. And I was really surprised by Arteta's approach. It was, it was a bit naive, I'll be honest. Now, in fairness flipping the script if Ben White takes that chance then this attacking approach has us 2 nil up within 20 minutes and we've blown them away so moments in football right I also think for everything I've said there I'm with Lee David Raya causes a domino effect of errors and actually people are saying well Gabriel should do better and Kivio doesn't turn quick enough and Rice doesn't track the runner yeah but Bayern have killed us by that point they've killed us pass pass goal Three, three touches of a football. And it's all because of David Raya coming out when he really didn't need to. We had control of that situation. So those are some of the negatives for me. I thought Saliba 
looked like the lights were too bright for him in that game, if I'm really honest. I thought him more than everyone, he played the furthest from his level, if I'm honest. Um, I was, But he's a young player and he's getting used to it, and I, I acknowledge that, but he struggled. Otherwise, we found a way back into it. You know, we the positives for me are that, you know, some Bayern Munich fans were saying online, the worst Bayern in 15 years versus the best Arsenal in 15 years, they couldn't beat us. I'd say the best Bayern have played probably in 2024, not that I've followed them too much, but, you know, looking at their results and how they've done, you know, one of the best performances they've played against probably the worst we've played in 2024, certainly the most naive we've been and a bit all over the place defensively. And actually we came out with a draw and we could have had more in that game, especially in that first half. We had some chances. We found a way back into it. I thought Jesus had a massive impact, which was great to see. And I think we can still do something out there. We'll talk about that later in the podcast because we need to you know, dissect this 90 more. But ultimately, I saw positives. I saw plenty of positives, actually. Um, but I also saw why this level is so unforgiving. And I don't think the players really recognise that. Yeah, um, we will delve into it more, Jordan. Um well, well, well it's a couple of nights sleep now. I I, I agree with, with James that you know it's still all to play for. I think we can still go through, but we we are no longer. I said we were favourites going into the first leg. We are no longer favourites now. Um, so I agree with that. yeah, I mean I I agree with with Lee and James in the sense that uh, if I'm to understand what they're saying properly, I think they're saying that the occasion the level really kicked in um this this is this is the big boys big boy business now this is the business end of the toughest competition in 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 football to win and i think there was an element of during the headlights with with a lot of our players um i also agree with james that you know the positive i take from it is is that's the worst we're going to play and that's the best buying can play and we're still in the tie, then the tie's alive. Um, uh, with Turkish, I, I think by are the favourites now. Um, but I think something happened in what I've been alluding to for a little while, and I know that I predicted 4-1, and that seems wild now, um, two days later. But I think something that I was concerned about was even though some of these European giants might be having a poor season or having a poor run of form, there is just something that equalizes it when you've got European pedigree. So Bayern Munich have not been good this season. I've, I don't watch the Bundesliga, granted, but I've seen a few of their games this season in the league. They have not been good this season. But when you are a club that is seeped in European pedigree and history and you've got players of the quality that they have, that's the equalizer. That equalizes a team that is on on really good form, which, which is what we are. Um, and we don't have that European pedigree yet. We don't have that 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 know-how that despite what's happening domestically, we know in Europe we've got a performance in us. And I think that's a lesson that we learned from Bayern Munich on, on Tuesday night. Um, yeah, I won't go into individual players. So I think we'll do that next. But overall, disappointed in the, in the performance. I don't think we were bad. I don't think we were bad. Um, I thought Bayern were good. Um, I just think there was an element of, as Lee says, an opportunity missed to really, you know, assert ourselves as probably the best team in Europe at the moment on form. Mm. I don't think we showed that in front of our own fans if as it well. Was, if it was the occasion that done it, we're out. Because the occasion only gets bigger away at Munich with, with their fans dominating the stadium. So if it was the... Because I lean away a bit from the occasion because I think tactically first half, Tuchel out done Arteta, I think... Yeah. James alluded to that. Yeah, yeah I hope yeah. it's not the occasion. Even though I get you, even though I was kind of not not dismissing of it beforehand in terms of heritage, I just think it's often emphasised a bit too much at times. Uh, and I just, I just hope it's not the occasion because like, I still have hope that we can go through. I, 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 I do think... too. Mm, go on, John. Go on. Well, I was going to say where, where I think the occasion was um, a little too much for the players was almost less about like it's the Champions League, it's the quarterfinals, like you hear the music and the opportunity. It was kind of less about that and more about I don't think Arsenal players for the first time really knew what to do. Not just so early in a game, but so early in a tie, like 10 minutes into the first leg, there is so much football still to play. 
And I actually thought the minute we got that first goal, we needed to just settle down a little bit. And mm. we didn't like we, it was all a little messy. I don't know. It was almost like they thought, well, the away goal rule doesn't count. So we may as well kind of keep going. If we can see it, it doesn't matter because we might get a second and a third. Um, but at the same time, I, I don't know. I don't think they had a lot of clarity in what they wanted to do. And actually, one thing that does give me hope that second leg is I think they'll have a lot of clarity, which is we're going to have to concede possession and Bayern will come to play. The beauty of the away goal rule being gone is we don't have to win out there. Um, and I just think they didn't really know what to do at 1-0 up because actually that goal, I don't want to say it came against the run of play, but the first 10 minutes they had a bit more of the ball. And we were just moving side to side and we were just you know staying in a good shape and then we get the goal because Kai Havertz, Saka and White kind of forced the error in their third. It's a brilliant finish from Saka. But you can see the players are incredibly excited. We've gone 1-0 up and then we start playing for the five minutes after that. But we never really like we settled and just consolidated that. Look, we've got the lead. Let's all calm down and, and play now. It all just looked a bit too excitable. I, I have to say that I, what, what Turkish says is the thing that worries me the occasion because I look at it and I think, right, where where was that defensive performance like it had been for the last three or four games? I, I, I looked at it on, I looked at the game, watched the game, and and I just felt that I, if I'll be really honest, no one played really well. No one played really well. The whole team didn't hit the standards of normal. There were a couple of players that that hit a good a good mark, say, uh, but didn't play above their performances or or, or get to to where they've been. Particularly yeah. defensively, and I, I look at that and I think, well, why? Why was that? Why? Why was we? Why was Gabriel a nervous wreck for the first time since last season? Why was uh, Saliba not quite at it? Why was Ben White not not at his best? Why was he smashing the ball instead of like placing it? Which is, you know, if you have a look at his performances of the last few weeks, Ben White, he's he's been a cultured midfield player playing at right back. Why was it? Why did why did he smash smash the ball as hard as he could when technically he's one of our best players? Um, why did Kivia have an awful game, like you know? And I, I, I think that if I if I look back at it, you know, yes, I'm going to say that our set and made mistakes. I think, you know, hindsight's a wonderful thing. I, I, people going, you know, but why did he play Kivia like you know? He played Tommy Asu in the last couple of games leading up to that. You play your best defender in that game if that's how you go. But in in Arteta's defence, Kivia has played very very well in the last few games, and then all of a sudden he's come up against Sarni. And um, done. And I'm going to have to say, the game changed second half for us when mm -hmm. Tuchel made a, a negative decision yeah. and uh, Arteta was positive. And, you know, there's been a little bit of talk on here about Jesus. I'm so glad that he turned up and, and, mm -hmm. and reminded us all how, what a good player he is. Because if it's not for him, we're out of this competition now, game because he come on and changed that. Yep. The goal's sensational, by the way. Absolutely. You know, if you look Brilliant. at a goal, uh, you know, yeah. a lot of goals are smashed in and there's been some great goals this this uh, this week, um, you know, with great efforts and all that. But that goal, the skill and then the actual setup of the pass in the area, in that sort of space, is nothing short of sensational. Mm -hmm. And that's what probably gives you a bit of hope, is that there are players in this team that can do something from nothing. And um, But I, 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 I felt that, um, we we weren't quite at it, and, and you know I look at the performances of certain players uh, uh, that have blown me, have given me so much confidence this season. weren't quite at it. The one thing I, I, I will bring up is is Olegard. I, I think that um, that's the first time anybody's man marked him, and I thought he had done well to shackle that. I like the way that he went about that. He didn't just stand in one position. He tried to make things happen. And it was a tough night for us. It was a tough night for us. I've got to say the fans were sensational on the day. It was a fantastic uh, atmosphere in there. And uh, it, it, it was a good game. But I, I just come away from there fuming, not only with a few decisions which changed my mind after the game, but, you know, the little bit of naivety of us. Uh, and and that's, that's what... That's what um, I take from that game and worries me. It's, but that's a European lesson. So, sorry, Turk, because yeah. I think that's part yeah. of, I think you have to go through European pain to, to progress. I think we realise that we are still novices at this level. 
Yeah. I, I do think it was the occasion. And I think Turkish is probably right. If it is the occasion, we're going to have to play bloody well to overcome that and buying the second leg. But I just feel like you have to you have to learn how to play in Europe. You have to learn what it feels mm. like to be to navigate. It's not the Premier League. It's it's still different because it's a football game. Why is it different? But it is different. And we, we're not seasoned enough to understand how to navigate the first leg of a of a European of a European um, tie in, in, in that sense. So I just feel in the same way we learned last season about how to navigate the latter part of a title running. You can see now we've learned from last season because we've been through it. We have to maybe learn this season before we can come again and and do better in the in the Champions League. Do you know? Do you know what made me realise that? Um, I had to go and do, do do an interview before the game outside the um, the Armory, and we've done it before, a uh, Premier League game. Probably two lots of cameras there, you know, like Sky Sports and and maybe somebody else. Like you know, there was about 10, 15 loads of cameras uh, there. It. It felt like a bigger game than the normal, it, 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 you know, the build up to it and everything like that. And um, I, 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 I didn't realise that at the time. I, I just didn't really take note of that. But after the game, you know, I, I, someone said to me, and I said, "Oh, there was like about ten cameras there, blah blah blah." But I did say one thing that came out of it. Yes, I spoke to my mate Stephen. Glad I spoke to him because he's, you know, a good good therapy, like you know, and. Um, he, he said something to me. He said, are you disappointed then that we didn't win? And I went, yeah, I am. I'm really down about it and all that. And he said, well, that ain't a bad thing then, is it? Because, we, you know, mm. we, we could have lost that game and you're feeling mm. disappointed because you didn't beat Bayern Munich who have uh, been in the Champions League every single season that we've been not in it and in, in the Europa League. Take the positives from that, you know, and um, I see what he's saying, but it's still... It, 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 it was it was a tough tough night for me as a fan. I don't know if you feel that the same. It's, you know? because, yeah. it's mm. because there's a level Arsenal have hit, and there's a sense of like almost like parents with your kid. Like you, you know, we wanted Arsenal to show the European stage what we were about as well. Like we yeah. also wanted us to like show everyone our best side and people to take us seriously. Like big up like Raúl for example on the DR Sports channel. Like. You know, like I, I think I was seeing him saying that he didn't think Arsenal were quite ready or like what we achieved. Like it's it's people who support clubs around the world where we're saying in the Premier League, we're finally earning respect from clubs. We're finally hearing, you know, rival fans saying, you know what, they're, they're serious. And we know yeah. what it's like to compete with Pep and Klopp. And we want to be in Europe showing Bayern fans, showing Real Madrid fans like this is what we're about. But Jordan is right. It is a different competition, managing 180 minutes, two legs, knowing that, you know, you're going to have the, the crowd one and not the other, you know, you've got to manage all that. And when, when did, let me ask you guys something. So I've just done some research. When did Man City get bought by the new owners? 2007, was it? 2007, 8? Uh, was, was, wasn't it, it, was wasn't it other owners then and then someone I else? I think it was a bit later, yeah. Okay, 08, 09? Around, 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 around then, yeah. 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 Nine, ten, maybe eight, so yeah. they won their first title three about th within three, four years of that. So 2011, 12. 12. 11, 12. Yeah. They won their first Champions League in 2023. So we're talking about 15 years in, right? Mm -hmm. Do you know where they finished in the Champions League? The year the year they won the title. So the group that won the title against Sir Alex Ferguson's Man United. Do you know where they finished in the Champions League that year? Last year, first round knockout. Group stage. Hmm. Year after that, as defending Premier League champions. Group stage. Year after that, Pellegrini's team. They won the Premier League again. Do you remember Negredo and Aguero yeah. and scoring all those goals? Round of 16. Year after that, defending Premier League champions. Round of 16. Year after that, semi-finals. They actually didn't get near the title. That was the year Leicester won it. They were poor that year. Semis. Year after that, round of 16. By the way, they've got Pep Guardiola from this point. Quarterfinals. Year after that, quarterfinals. Year after that, quarterfinals. Who are we talking? Monaco, Lyon. Clubs like that knocking them out. Some Top Monaco are quite good. Then they got to the final in 2021. So it took, I think, four attempts for Pep Guardiola. Now, my point is, this isn't a, you know, basically, let's all forgive Arsenal. It's all fine. Let's not worry. But it is a point that 
Jordan's absolutely right. There is something about European competition. Why do Liverpool always do quite well in this? Even 30 years that Premier League title, and they just kind of know how to figure this competition out. Real Madrid under Zidane, I don't care what anyone says. I'm not saying that wasn't an elite group of players. It was. You know, Modric, Casemiro, Cruz, Ronaldo, Bale. I get it. Of course, I understand why they won the Champions League. But, but Zidane never felt like a Klopp or Guardiola-esque manager. And yet they won three in a row. Three in a row. Like, and they've won five in the last eight, nine years. Now, they've never dominated. They've never been as dominant as, okay, maybe they have been as dominant or as good as City. But my point is, like, it didn't take a super, super coach to go win three in a row. They just knew it. They understood the competition. And this elite group of players know what it was about. There was something about this competition that is just... And experience and, and heritage matters it just and, does and, and we haven't your, got it to your point james as well I, I don't know for sure but i would hazard a guess the same lineage from cities being bought to winning it is similar for chelsea it's similar for manchester united yes yeah, so to, when did abramovich come 2003 four something like that and they won yeah, it in 2012 and we all know that they got knocked out in you know they would say some heartbreaking knockouts in quarterfinals, semifinals. United's the same. You have to go through this. You, you have to you learn. Are, you see how you men are, I don't want to bring it back. Actually, fuck it. You see how you men are talking about owners. It, it's not the owners that have been here five years. They've been here, they've been here nearly about 20 years. So no, we no, 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 we but... talk about the owners. With Man City, we're talking about the owners. With Arsenal, th th that's why the balance here is so like volatile. Because Arteta's, you know, four years in. That's fine. I'm not talking about that. But yeah. our owners are near 20 years, and I don't give a shit about this sole ownership thing. So as much as, all right, Man City didn't win it till five, ten years in, as much as Chelsea say, these owners are 20 years deep from telling us we're, we're, we're moving into this new stadium to compete with Bayern Munich. Yeah, we were potentially out to Bayern Munich, the same team that knocked us out seven years ago. I'm not saying that's un unaccepted. Bayern Munich are an elite, elite side. But what I'm saying is the, the patience is, you know, We've had a lot of patience with this ownership. I'm not talking about Arteta here with this ownership. So I can't yeah. just, I can't, I can't use those examples and say, okay, this is facts here because those owners are known and have been known for year in, year out, wanting to compete, wanting to win, wanting to show ambition. So far, we're in the early stages of believing the Cronkies are this. So unless this last two year trend continues from the ownership, you know, for the next five to 10 years where, you know, we can sustain, dominate and win majors across a longer period of time, which we don't know is the plan. We don't know what their plan is. Don't forget, people talk about LA Rams. They talk about Denver Nuggets. They, bro, they've all won something recently, but look how long the owners have been in charge of these, these, these organizations. 20 years plus. So just because LA Rams won it a couple of years ago, best believe it took them 20 to do it. And when's the next time they're going to win it? Or are they resting on their laurels with one? I'm going too deep into that. I don't really want to talk about that. Yeah. Because I'd rather talk I, about it. I, I think so, I just so, think that. So, sorry, sorry Lee, before you come in. I, I, I hear what you're saying about the owners. I, I, I do, I'm kind of with you there. But I think what I and I think what James is talking about, and maybe they're linked, is the, 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 the heritage and the seasoning and the understanding and the experience of navigating a European Cup. And yes, the owners have been here for 20 years. So you could say in 20 years, you should have learned how to play in the European Cup by now. That, that's, that's true and fair. But I'm just referring to the fact that to win a European Cup, you have to, it, it takes time. It take, unless you're Porto, who won it on a random one with a freak manager called Jose Mourinho, it does take time. It, it takes don't a you while. Think we, don't you think we can't really compare ourselves and look at Man City or look at Chelsea more than we can look at Dortmund 96-97 or Porto, like you said, or Atletico reaching the final twice or Tottenham reaching the final? We, We've reached the final. Yeah, yeah, we reached. Yeah, but that was, you know, I, I'm talking about since then. Like, we, we, oh, I, don't, I don't think we can look at Man City or look at Real Madrid or look, at, look at anybody Turkish. Yeah, we can't. can't look at we've, we've not got no real great European presence. That is the fact. That has happened since I've ever been supporting Arsenal. The, uh, the first time I can remember us being in the Champions League was in '91. Was it '91, '92 season? Because we hadn't, you know, by then you, you had to win the thing to get into the competition. Mm -hmm. I don't think we've been, you know. The last time we won a European trophy, Arsenal Football Club, was 94. You know, and that was a cup winners' cup, not the elite one. I, I, 
I, I don't think we've got really that much European pedigree. That's what I think has been a little bit disappointed about us. We've had opportunities, you know, in the in in um, UEFA Cup before it was the Europa League and, and fouled on a, on a couple of occasions and lost finals and, and things like that. I, I we, we were piss poor in the Europa League as well. We were in it yeah. five years. Yeah, we were in it 100%. And, you know, we, we was doing the start in 11 and um, I said about, you know, um, the one thing that worries me about Bayern Munich is their pedigree and all that. I got taken the piss out of by Julian um, by saying like, you know, oh, what, so you're saying Nottingham Forest are, are, are to be feared then? You know what I mean? And he didn't really get what I was saying. Like, you know what I mean? The Nottingham Forest of this world, when, when they were playing in European, had pedigree. But what I'm saying is, I do think there is something in that in Bayern Munich. Real Madrid, but a few years ago, were poor. I don't know if you remember it, they were poor. They scraped their way to the final. And I said, well, they, can't, they ain't going to win it. And someone said to me, don't write them off because they're Real Madrid. And I learned a lesson from that. And I thought... Do you know, and they did go on and win it, and it, and 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 the field. You're right. That. Sorry, sorry to cut well, you, Lee. Wasn't that when they nearly went out to PSG, but then Benzema found a load of goals, and then they nearly yeah, went yeah. out to Chelsea because Chelsea threw a comeback, and then they they managed to come through that, yeah. and then they faced City, who basically should have won at the Bernabeu, and then Rodrigo popped up with two injury yeah. time goals. Yeah, you're right. They sort of just. But they can't, and then look at this, and then you look back on it, and then they beat Liverpool in the final. And you go, look at the yeah. teams they beat; it's unbelievable. Yeah, and 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 didn't shouldn't have probably won any of those games, if I'll be honest. But the, my, well, I remember one of my mates turning around and saying, "They win that because it's Real Madrid, or they won it." And I, I get that. It, Bayern Munich are, uh, have got a pedigree that we haven't got in Europe. It's as simple as that. You know, uh, Ajax a few years ago um, when they got done by Tottenham. Had pedigree in, in 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 you know when you look at it, I, I, and and I look at these teams and and you know Barcelona last night you know I, I I'm, I'm sort of thinking well I don't know if Barcelona are that, that good this time comes to the, the Champions League there they are beating PSG away from home and I do think there is something in that and and I, I felt that yesterday uh, sorry on 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 Tuesday it was it was shown it was shown and. Um, it, it's we haven't got that not, pedigree, and I don't think it's to do with the owners. It's just something that Arsenal have got to to to, to sort out. But it's also not just this like it's not just this non-existent like something in the air that we don't have. It's not just that. It's also that the Bayern Munich because taking it really back to the ninety. Also, we talked about the bigger picture, which I do think is important. But back to the ninety against Bayern. It's also the players on the pitch that have been there and done it. Now, Harry Kane. Mm -hmm albeit in and out of the Champions League with Tottenham, mostly in it, obviously got to the final. But he wasn't even a part of that team that got to that final. He was injured for a lot of it. But Harry Kane has been there and done it, uh, bar lifting the trophies. I'm not even having a pot when I say that. But like just in terms of his goal records and, and everything else, we all know he's an elite footballer. Leroy Sane, he's been there and done it. He was a centurion, obviously been at Bayern Munich doing his thing. Um, Kingsley Coman, Serge Gnabry, Kimmich. And I can mention all these players, Thomas Muller, they've been there and done it. So it's not just, like I said, it's not just Bayern as a club have this air of heritage around them. It's the players that went on that pitch against Arsenal, were able to understand the occasion a little bit more. All right, we're not going to dominate the ball, but this is how we can hurt them. They're doing this, so now we'll do that. They were just able to navigate yeah. a bit better than us. And... I mentioned Arteta at the beginning of this video, and it reminded me of something you told me, Turkish, that in the comments of our last video, I didn't actually see the comments, but apparently some people were saying that we haven't been giving Arteta enough credit. You know, when things go wrong, we're the first to talk about what he did wrong. Things have been going great, and we've not been giving him enough credit. That might be true. I think people need to realise that when we're saying, you know, when Turkish is saying we're going to win a major in the next 12 to 18 months, that is immense credit to Arteta. I'm not directly That's saying true. it, but we, we, that is giving him immense credit. Me saying, changing my mind after Brighton, going, you know what? You just got to get on board with the title race and say we're going to win it and just in, enjoy the ride. That's me saying I believe in Arteta. So maybe they're right. Maybe we haven't outwardly directly said, and credit to Arteta, he has done brilliantly. And he has. In 2024, he's been near immaculate. I just felt in this game, there was a naivety from the players and a touch from the manager, um, and I think a lack of clarity caught us. I don't think we really knew what to do. And I felt even at 2-1 down, do you remember when Sane was through on goal and Ben White and Erdogan yeah, had to recover yeah. just to stop him? 
I was sat there going, just go in at half time, two one down. I know it sounds silly, but just stop, just stop the flood, mm-hmm. <laughs> because you're all. It, it, you need to recognise that this is a mess right now, and I don't think we just knew how to manage those, the big game moments. Those two moments are big because you know a lot of people will say we could have gone two and up in the first twenty, and I think we would have smoked them from there. And you're right, but we could have gone three one down before half time, and yeah. I think the game's done from there. So from that, from half time. I guess the draw would take it. But you know what? You mentioned Arteta. I think, in my opinion, the only thing he got wrong was Kivio. You know, and, and for, for a manager that deals with fine margins so much, I was very surprised to see Kivio. I, I trusted it. I believed in it because he deserved his spot. But I was very weary of that battle against Sane. You know, and lo and behold, that's what, you know, this ain't a genius. I'm not saying that was, it was just kind of like expected. Kivio, stiff, centre-back, Sane, that, that type of wing. And he got at him. That's the only mistake. I think Jorginho starting made sense, nullified. I think what other question marks were there? There wasn't the setup was weird though. Having the Jorginho yeah, yeah, yeah. was a bit. I agree with that. Strange. I agree with that. But I'm not letting Raya get away with it. I'm sorry, I'm not letting Raya no, no, get away no. with it. I don't know how people are are trying to blame others before blaming Raya. My man sure. left the goal 45 yards out. 45 yards out. Was Gabriel's touch a bit heavy? Yes. Did Gabriel have a goalkeeper to pass back to? No. And that is the key in this situation. If Raya stays in goal, Gabriel takes one touch and he passes it 25 yards back to Raya for a reset. We see it about 30 times a game, yeah, you know, if right. not more. A simple reset. The reason Gabriel couldn't do that is because Raya's so close to him because he got, you know, I don't know, out of rush of blood. So he has to kind of do a weird pass into Kivio. Now, the pass wasn't great. Kivio was too stiff. Rice got caught on the uh, on the overlap. Um, Sane, beautiful pass to Goretzka. And then Gnabry got played onside by Ben White. And then it goes put ra- through Raya's legs. So for me, Raya, listen, it was a bold decision to, you know, Im- improve on our goalkeeper this season. And I think we have. But I also see quite a few errors from, from Raya. Recently, his kicking has been poor against City, Brighton. And so it didn't cost us. But I can't lie, that moment might, we'll know next week, might have cost us our Champions League place. Because, OK, we have a lot of time off the back of that. But all Bring of these... Penalty teams, an old place. Yeah, yeah, 100. We, we, could, we could continue going on on about right in that game. He just didn't really... Awful. Yeah, he, he was awful. He, he wasn't was, great. I've got to say it now. Thierry Henry starting to blame Declan Rice for it. You know what I mean? And things like that. People that I respect and all that. Like, you know, go to where the source was. You know what I mean? Like, you know... Um, he done that. The penalty, you know, I, I think at the end of the day, uh, he should save it as well. I've looked at it three or four times, goes through his legs. Okay, you know, one on one, you 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 don't expect it so much. Like one goes through his legs in the last minute and it's the post, you know what I mean? Save it, man. You know what I mean? And as for the penalty, you know, there's a lot of pressure on that. He's running up Harry Kane, he's dived already. You know, what I mean? he's made up his mind. That was weird. I, I, that I was thought weird. he was awful on the game. And listen, I'm going to say, it like, I, I give him praise against Brian. Yeah, his kicking weren't great, but when it mattered, he made the save, a, a fantastic save at 1 0. So, and he has done well for us in the last night. But you brought this goalkeeper in to make a difference, to make a difference. And and on Tuesday, he made a difference, not, the, not in the right way. And I, I look back at that. Um, Yes, Gabriel should smash it into the stands. Yeah, I, I know football's changed a little bit. Like that, if he stays in his goal, Gabriel just rolls the ball back to him. It's as comfortable as anything, like you know. And because he looks up and he's right on his shoulder, Gabriel panics. You know what I mean? Like, um, yes, after that, there was mistakes to be made. But you know, for Don't me, you know Ray Ray has to take a lot of the, the fault there. And people will turn around and go, ah, that's because you want Ramsdale. I don't want Ramsdale on the team. Like, Ray has done enough to say, let's give me the confidence. And so to, and I've said about I said, well, maybe he's right. It's a good decision. But I'm sorry. When it really met, those, those are the games you brought him in for, because you know, and things like that. Big, big games. The game was too big for him as well. Like, you know, when's his, when was his biggest game of the season? Brentford versus Chelsea? That's been his biggest game of his life before he come to the Arsenal? Certainly, like, um, the, the biggest games that he's played in, in his career, have been when he's been in an Arsenal shirt. Every game's going up and up and up. And that was his, that was the night when you wanted the assurances of a, 
a goalkeeper that knows what he's doing, like which we've been promised that he is, you know. And he fouled on everything, everything he fouled on, and and, and that's it, like you know. I, I'm not, but he's got a chance to redeem himself I, next week. I weirdly thought his kicking was slightly better in this game. Actually, it, it wasn't was great. It wasn't it, great. It, yeah. Yeah, it was slightly, slightly better. I, I didn't think it was. It wasn't as like um, visibly poor. Decision making, James. Um, yeah, no, no. Look, look, I, I agree. For me, when there's a catalogue of er catalogue of errors, I always look back at that first error and think, what caused it? Now, it doesn't, it doesn't forgive a lot of other players because I think you're absolutely right. I think we're right to talk about David Raya willing to forgive the mistakes. I think ultimately in 2024, he's really grown into yeah. his role in his position. Um, I do think others to talk about. While Raya for me is the primary source of the the the, the moment, I actually thought Henri's analysis of Declan Rice and that was quite good. And the reason I'm happy to point that out isn't just because you know Declan Rice actually should have recognised he needed to drop back and just you know protect his defence a little bit more. I actually thought Declan Rice was a little bit anonymous in the game. I didn't think it suited him I playing agree. so high up the pitch. Now some people were saying, well, because he was on a yellow card, Arteta wanted to keep him a little bit away from kind of the action. I would rather defend a lead without Rice at the yeah. Allian than chase one with him. Now, actually, we've got neither. We've got him, but we're not. We're we're not. We're, we're not chasing one, nor are we. Are we defending one? It's just you know we've got him, and we've got to you know go out there and. Can try I just say something, James? You know, I mean, you're right yeah. about Rice, and this is what what's the, the people are afraid to criticise for certain things. Other people turn around and say, I, I actually said Rice didn't have his best game night. You know, so what? I mean, it happens. Yeah, he's been a but, nine out of ten every other game. Yeah, and but people turn around and say, oh, because oh, blaming Arteta because he changed him into three or four positions. Just say that he just hasn't had a good game. It ain't the end of the world. But yeah, whatever whatever way you look at it, I think he should have played deeper. But in the role he was in, that never affected Granit Xhaka last year. Xhaka was always still involved, you know, in that same mm -hmm. position that and role that Rice was expected to play. And I thought we'd unlock Rice a little bit more when Zinchenko came on. Who, by the way, I thought that was a good cameo. I was actually quite happy with Zinchenko when he yeah, came on. You should have seen on Twitter. I mean, oh my God, everyone couldn't believe it. And I did think this isn't the most surprising thing. We are behind. And, you know, Zinchenko is the more attacking of the fullbacks. The thing was, we were so... Bold move. It was bold, right? But, you know, Kivior, uh, he's not a fullback. So he gets a touch of forgiveness and understanding from that perspective. But he shouldn't be turned that easily for the goal. That was poor. And um, take him out. Take him out. Like if just you, don't you, get you, turned you like that. Turned. Just stand your ground and just you, don't let him spin. It like, can happen. It can, like, yeah. I, I, but just take him. Look at what Partey done. Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I guess that's true. Yeah. I guess that's true. Jorginho right. yeah. really struggled, but I thought he was also a bit of on an island by himself. I'm, I know I sound like I'm making an excuse for every player. I'm not. I mean, they, they ultimately weren't good enough. Kai Havertz was a weird one because I felt Havertz, my, my full-time reaction was, that's the game that Havertz has no impact in. And then I look back and actually the Ben White chance and the Saka goal, he has a part to play. So I was like, wow, he did nothing, but actually was almost the reason we had two goals. But when Jesus came on, you recognised for what everything I said on the previous podcast, what Kai Havertz is adding that Jesus isn't, you saw what Jesus is adding that Kai isn't, which was a give me the ball, put it here. I don't care if there's five men on me, give it to me because I'll give it back to you. And when Jesus is in that form, he's a bit of a cheat code because he allows you to access areas of the pitch you weren't accessing the rest of the game. And what he did for that, and I loved what you said on your fan cam, Turkish. I think you were saying he gets criticised for the dropping the shoulder, the, the checking in, the cutting out, all that. But when it pulls it, when he pulls it off, he creates that moment of magic for Trossard. And he was a game changer. And the two players that come out of credit for me were Erdogan and Jesus, because I felt Erdogan maybe didn't play to his 10 out of 10, the best we've ever seen. But I felt for how we were struggling in the game, his first touch was immaculate at all times. Uh, didn't get every pass right. His, his decision making on the pass weren't always right. He tried a few things over the top that weren't on. But I just felt the way he looked after the ball. And do you know why I appreciated that? Because when we got the equaliser on 75, I was thinking, we could win this now. There's about 20 minutes of football to play. And it got to about minute 80 second, to 82. And I was thinking, why are you lot playing like it's the 95th minute of a Premier League game? And what I mean by that is, at full time in a 90 minute Premier League game, it's done. You can't go back and, and fix what happened in those 90. In the Champions League, you can. 
and I, and I was watching Trossard who bar the goal. I don't think it was a good cameo. Was His touch was loose. The ball rolled past him. He tried to play a ball to the edge of the penalty area. That was cut out. That was never on. Partey was giving the ball away. White was giving the ball away. Uh, everyone, Saliba, I thought was poor. And I was watching. I was tearing my hair out in the 87th minute going, stop forcing it. Stop forcing it. Because I, if you're going to play like this, I'll take the draw now. You needed to be patient and work the opportunity. It was going to come. But we were playing like it was going to be two points dropped, like there wasn't a second tie, which I get it. The Allianz is difficult, and I get it. We wanted to win it at home, and I understand, but not at such a risk of losing it. And then Coleman hits the post, and we nearly did lose it. Mm -hmm. I felt we looked so naive in that last 10 minutes. I couldn't believe it. I was honestly so... That was the most furious I was with the team, that last 10, 12 minutes. I couldn't believe the way we were playing it. Um, But we get through it. And ultimately, then the penalty incident, which we still haven't talked about, will come to that. Well, but I was going to come in. Know, it was a I weird was... last 20 minutes. I was praising Arteta and Jesus for the impact. And I was also mad at the players for the head loss in that last 10, 15. We, did, we, did, we, did, we didn't manage. We didn't manage that last 15 minutes well at all. You're right. Um, no. But I'm going to say something that's not going to be very popular with the Arsenal fan base. But I'm going to agree I, with you. I think bar one decision, the referee had a really good game. Yeah, I thought the referee had a really good game. I know that a lot of people are fuming about certain incidents. I think the referee had a really good game, and the bad decision, the the the, the decision that he got wrong, went for Arsenal. The Gabriel handball. Uh, um, the prof- Gabriel handball is Arsenal uh, fans prophetic, like you know what I mean. If you if you're gonna say that, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not having it. I'm gonna. I, I actually no, think no, you're no, right not no, to give. I'm gonna walk off. Like, I, I don't. I'm, Fed up. I'm fed up with getting penalties against us and everybody turning around and saying, oh, we got contact and all that. Like, And when it goes against the other way, like, you know, I, I, I'm not having it. But go are, on. You referring to, are you referring to the Saka chance or the Gabriel handball? I, I, I get, look, listen, I, I, I'll say it very easy. That referee was shocking all night. Let's get, let's get, let's get, let's get this no, right. Agree. Let's get this right. The first penalty, is that a penalty? Right. Which one? Which one? Is there one? Is it a penalty? It's a lever one, yeah. He's is caught. It a he's, it's a so foul. He's caught him the, on the, the way ankle. he touches him, the, 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 the way he goes over, Sani, I'll tell you what, we can do that a thousand times. There's no way on God's earth he will fall over like he does. There's contact and he makes it more, more. It's a foul. It's a foul. Yeah, I'll give no, it. No, 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 no. So, no so, sorry, sorry before, right. before you continue, before you continue, it's not that he touched him that makes it a foul. He's fouled him that makes it a mm. foul. It's a yeah, foul. Yeah, he's, he's fouled him, but he doesn't. He dives over a way that is that foul. Maybe, maybe. maybe. He falls over is not the way he's fouled. That's let's get that right. But I get. I'm not arguing with that. I'm not arguing with that. Harry okay. Kane should be sent off. Simple as that. Like if you're the letter of the law, right? I don't agree. Uh, why? Why don't you agree, Jordan? Because I don't. Why, think why don't you agree? Like, tell me why you don't agree that he let me should. T- not t- let me off. let me tell you why. Because I don't think he's caught him. Fl- I don't think it's as bad an elbow whereby he's caught him with the corner of his elbow in Gabriel's face. I think he has been naughty. I think he has, I think he knows what he's doing backing into, into Gabriel. I don't think he's swung at Gabriel. It's not a swing. It's a lean in, lean in. He's used his, his body to, to um, gain the presence to control the ball. It's naughty. It's naughty, but it's not a swing. He's not I swung he at Gabriel. I, I, I don't where think I agree is. with Jordan, I, I, I saw it as, when we watched it live, I saw it as orange. What I mean by that is I thought, I can't 100% tell that he meant it, but I think he did. The more I watched it, he you meant it, man. Because he looks over naughty. one shoulder and then goes and like cute. that. It's if he naughty, jumps it's up, cute, but it's not a swing. Jumps, in my opinion, I play for, if he jumps up, it's completely different. He's standing still. His feet are on the ground. So it's why, why his feet are on the ground, I want you to tell me why is he going like that. Why is he going like that? If you're I going up to the right. ball, I can understand. If your feet but, are firmly me, planted on the ground, why? Yeah. I think he's going for it. Why is he doing that? There's one reason he's doing it. He's trying to make himself... It's, it's, Harry Kane is one of the cute. Harry Kane is a very cute player. I, I think I know he knows what he's doing in terms of he looks at Gabriel. He's trying to make sure that he's protecting himself. And I think I think it's an orange. I think as James is saying, I don't think it's an out and out. There's no such swung. thing. There's no such thing as an orange. Right? There it's isn't. either sending off or it's not. Right, yeah, then, then, it's not then it's not for me. You can't turn around and go, oh, no, no. It's then, a then, then, it's, or it's not. then it's not then. Then, right, then it's not. Okay, for me. well, that's your that's your opinion, like you know. For, then, 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 
he, he, he makes the thing about the Gabriel thing, like, you know what I mean? That's a penalty. I don't care what anybody says. Hang, hang, no hang on, hang on, hang on. Sorry, Lee, sorry, like Lee. That. You pick sorry, up the me. ball, on a, on a, uh, it's a penalty. And the hang, reason hang on, it Lee, doesn't sorry. give Arsenal a penalty at the end, because I'm telling you this now, right? That is a penalty in European football, 100% by anyone. And I'll tell you what, you're, I will be on here in three or four weeks and we'll see another one. And everybody go, oh, but there was contact. I, I see one against that. Liverpool with, um, that is the same thing. So oh, hold on. It's the same thing. I, I, I just want to hear flying through loads. On, on let's just, yeah. So let's, okay, the, so. re, the reason you don't give that penalty at the end is because I'm pretty sure, in, in my opinion, it's only my opinion, is because of that handball. Okay, so hold on. Let's let's actually go through this in a more structured manner. So the Sane one, hands up if you think that's a penalty. I think it's a pen for Bayern. I agree with that decision. Cool. All right. Now, Turkish, we just talked about the Harry Kane red. Do you think that's a red? <laughs> Yeah, just about. Yeah, because yeah, I, what, I I agree yeah. with um, Jordan that the elbow wasn't swung, but Harry the, ha, he he swung his hip. So you you, you don't necessarily you have to do this, but you can hold this here and swing your kind of hip into it with, without it looking like you. So so he was smart with it. I mean, it's dark arts. If Arsenal player did that and, and and got a yellow, I wouldn't say he got away with it. I'd say what what what, what I will him. say is if he if he gets sent off, he can't complain. I will no, say that no. if, if he gets sent off, he can't complain. But if I'm the ref, I wouldn't send him off for that. Okay. So so then the Gabriel handball one, which Lee, you're saying you think we got away with that. You think that's a pen? It's a pen. He's a pen ball, yeah. So so <laughs> I, so now I've got I've got when I first saw that, I thought, well, the rules, know the rules, about right? It. He blew the whistle. What did I? What did I leave? Even know about it. No, what the fuck right. was going on? So, so, nor the TV. The rules didn't are the rules. About it. Didn't even know until I was on the train on the way home. Didn't okay. know about it. We established no one knew about this. So, <laughs> neither did I. I didn't know till the full-time show. So, what they're saying, the referee's blown his whistle, which means the goal kick process has been taken. Now, I've got, here's where actually I think the ref's right not to give that. Because, for God's sake, people, is that what we want in the game? Like players decide that they want to take the goal kick from a slightly different angle and they go and set that up. As far as I'm aware, now people can let me know if the comments in the comments if I'm wrong. When the ref blows the whistle, isn't that his signal you can begin the play? It's not the play has begun. It's all is set. Go when you're ready. And are Arsenal not within their right to say, and they do it on every, go watch every routine. It's always out to Gabriel. He touches it with his hand. He sets up and they play. That's always been how Arsenal have taken goal kicks. Now, I just think, do we want to live in a world where the ref's going, oh, got you there. Penalty buying. What? Sorry. No, I, res I respect It's respect like, that. is that really, is that really the football uh, we want? Uh, that we want to be in this world where we're going to pick out the, 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 the petty little things. It, when there's a free kick given on the edge of the area and the ref blows his whistle, You've seen you've seen free kick takers then go touch the ball, reset it, whatever. Because the ref has said by that at that point you're ready to play. I could be wrong. I could be talking utter nonsense. That's how I've always interpreted it. That the referee's whistle is a signal of you we're good to go when you're ready. And Arsenal weren't ready. They just restarted it a different way. I think he's right not to give that man. And I'm not saying yeah. I no, get, he... I get with the letter of the law, it's maybe it's a handball in the penalty area. But I bet every single other fan if that went against them, there would be head loss. And it's not, it's not the same as the Van Persie red at Barcelona because that's one of the most scandalous red cards I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, that was bad. Um, yeah. But but we, but it in a sim, there's a slight similarity in that. Well, he did kick the ball after the ref blew his whistle. No, but we're applying common sense. You couldn't hear him. You can tell you couldn't hear him mm -hmm. so soon after. Can we have referees just apply common sense in the game? And I think he did the right thing there. Like, I, I, I understood what people were saying online, but I don't think we got away with one. I think no, that I was think just good officiating. I think, I think Tuchel's explanation of what he said on the pitch, I'm with the ref. You don't you don't decide big game, you know, big games like this, you know, f from a mistake. It was a mistake, uh, and if it was given, you know, it would have been very silly. But the fact that it's a Champions League quarter final, you know, it's all to play for. It's a tight. Like, nah, you don't give that. I'm sorry, you don't give that. And yeah. I think if if Bayern, if Bayern Munich win the game five one, Tuchel doesn't mention that. 100%. It's only because it, it's only because it was close. But but you know, if he gives it, we can't complain. I didn't see anything. 
you, you see something like, oh, something might have happened during the game. You know what I mean? I didn't see anybody arguing with the referee. I didn't even know it was there. I didn't Both even know players did protest a touch, but I think they even probably realised, like, are we really protesting this? Like, I, I just think there's nothing incident. But anyway. Oh, over yeah, to... It's the last minute penalty. So, so okay. Back. So over to the Saka one. So this has caused so much debate. And I will be honest, I don't have a very fixed position on it. I said in my fan cam that I do think Saka has made a move towards initiating contact. And because of that, <laughs> whatever Neuer's done wrong, I feel like it maybe negates the fact that Neuer's maybe stuck a bit of a leg out or whatever. Because I think with Saka, there feels to me like there's a little bit of a... He takes the ball around Neuer and it just looks on slow motion, yes, and on replay, yes. And I know that's not always a fair way to look at it. Because when you look at it in real time, it looks stonewall. When you look yeah. at it at full speed, it looks like he's just clattered him. And to be honest, it's probably more how we should be judging the game. 100%. But it does look like there's a little bit of a push and a let me leave my leg out. And let me. And by the way, let me say this to fans who are ripping Saka online. There is a difference for me between a dive and a, I'm going to sit invite contact. All elite forwards wait to see if they're going to get fouled. They all do. They maybe don't really get the way out, really get out of the way because it's gaining advantage. That's they all do it. Hazard used to be the master in the middle of the pitch of getting to the ball just before someone, so he get clattered and win a free kick. Like for me, Saka, he's not quite done that, but he's just waited to see if there's going to be contact. There is, but because there doesn't look a clear movement to get out of the way, which I think he probably can. They've not given it. I don't know where I stand on it. I think they're probably right not to give it. Um, but it's all a bit grey, if I'm honest. Football fans on land talk shit, man. The, the greatest players have, have had moments like that where you could accuse them of diving or accuse them of making meals of it. So what? It's, it's part and parcel of the game now. Football's changed to the point where, all right, 15, 20 years ago, things like that. You know, was looked down upon. That's not you're not a real man. All these, I've got, I've got to say, it, all these Arsenal fans trying to say, "Oh, yeah, it's not a penalty." Harry Kane done it to us a couple of years ago, like, and everybody said it's cute. It, it, oh, he, he's done Harry it. Done it. Said Song's, that, done it. That, Song's done it against us. It's cute. There's contact. You've got to accept it as a penalty. When one of our own does it, oh no, it's not a penalty. You know what I mean? Should be that like. And people going like, "Oh, oh, oh he made his decision." Ever looking real to sprinting it, you know, was he was he stopping slow motion That's to think thing. about it? He's going at pace. And if if the goalkeeper doesn't put his leg out, if the goalkeeper ain't there, does he does he smash into him? Does he hell as like goalkeeper puts his leg out there? You know James, what I mean? Did, did they VAR check the cane elbow and the and the penalty at the end? I don't oh, know about listen, the cane I'm, elbow, but I'm they did really they did VAR you know. check it because Frank had the anything, I say. It, look, listen, let's get, go back to the first penalty. I'll be really honest with you. If the referee decides that's not a penalty, VAR are not going to get involved because it's not clear and obvious, right? And I'll go along with that one with Saka. Once he didn't give that, right, it, it, it's it's not clear and obvious, right? If that referee gives that game, I can tell you that now, VAR are not overturning that neither. It was one of those ones. Right? We're never going to overturn it. That's why. So that's exactly why, Lee, with these decisions, and I've never been afraid to call out the PGM or well and the standard refereeing, but if we are in that camp of, well, you can see why VAR haven't intervened, then I'm inclined to not go on and on and on and on about it. Arsenal fans, there was a lot of we were robbed. We weren't ro robbed because we made a load of errors. And I know, so I know you said that, Liz, so I didn't even realise when I was saying that. But I, I couldn't go along with that because ultimately there are a lot of people that don't think that was a penalty. So that one just didn't go for us. I look at the other 94 minutes where we didn't really do enough. Saka, for me, has initiated a little bit of contact. Maybe it looks that way in slow motion. I can't tell for sure. It didn't go for us. We move on. I know, Jordan, you, you don't think it was. A no, just one thing on it. Well, I, I said that we was robbed, right? Because I'm, I didn't know about that incident. And, I said, and, I, and I'm looking at it. I said, I think I said to you, so I can't believe you ain't give it. I, I now yeah. know why I didn't give it because of that other incident. That's in yeah. my opinion. That is my opinion because he maybe, thought, oh, no, it was, it's touch and go, but I've done one up there. I, I, favour for them. I'm going to do a favour there. But I didn't see the incident. From, from I didn't, I, when I was done that interview, I hadn't seen the, um, 
replays. I wasn't even talking about you because I know outside the ground people haven't seen it. But but it's been like all of yesterday's discourse was, you know, we're Arsenal robbed, and it's just like look like. You know, the Harry Kane red was for me a little bit more, was more clear. But yeah, anyway, well, if, if, well, if if Lee's correct in what he's saying, and the referee was leveling it up, then we're the eventual winners. Because yeah, if, he's, if, if, if he if he gives the penalty, he's we're got to send off down. Gabriel, and we're three one down. So uh, if, if if what Lee's saying is right overall, I don't. I think we have to just kind of hold that. I don't think it was a penalty on Saka. I think that it comes down to. I think we all agree that he's initiated the contact. Cool. The question then comes down to, but does that matter then? Does that negate it being a foul? That's the question. You can you can initiate contact. Does that still mean you are fouled? And I lean on the side of no. If you leave your leg out there to be fouled, it's not a foul, in, in my opinion. I don't have an issue with Saka trying to do that. My bigger issue is just round the keeper. Sometimes you have to initiate a foul because you're in trouble. Just round the keeper. He could have rounded the keeper and scored. He didn't need to do any of that. That's my big issue. He didn't need to do... I agree with Turkish in that lots of players do it now as part of the modern game. I'm actually okay with it. But in that occasion, he didn't need to do that. Just round the keeper and score. Like, I'll, say another, I'll say another thing. It's been online. Liverpool away this season. He does exactly that. He doesn't go over. Doesn't get the penalty. He's fouled. Thank you for mentioning go that. Over. That's true. Oh, Thank yeah, you for mentioning yeah, yeah. that. So, so, and so I've had what, what, what do you yeah. want him to do? What do you want the man to do? He's got. Go, like, I remember watching that. And go, go down. It's a penalty, but he yeah. stays on his feet. Yeah. And we don't get the, the referee ain't going to go. Oh, I'm giving you the penalty. It's a penalty. But he so this is where. Me. No, you're right, Lee. So this is where rival fans who've been going on at Saka need to just respectfully shut the up because. They need to start. Re- people need to start realizing that the reason footballers go down. It really annoys you when casuals are like, "Why do footballers dive?" It, the standard of refereeing is so poor that you have to throw your body to the ground to gain their attention. If you don't, then they automatically assume there's not enough contact. I don't like that in the sport, but I actually do agree with you in that sense. Like that Liverpool one's a great example at Anfield. Saka stayed up when Allison went through him. Allison like absolutely got nowhere near the ball, made clear as day contact with Saka, but Saka tried to stay on his feet to put the ball in the back of the net. So it's a it's a fine balance. It's also hard to know when you're sprinting at the goalkeeper. Punishment. It's hard to know how easy it is to just, in the 95th minute, to just take your body around. But I, I'm inclined to think he could have got around him. I'm inclined to think he tried to buy the pen a little bit. That doesn't mean Noy doesn't necessarily foul him. But I can I can see why if it looks at all like you've initiated contact, they didn't give it. But can I just ask who thought the Harvey Elliott one for Liverpool against Man United was a penalty? No. You didn't think that was either. So that's consistent, to be fair. No. Anyone else? And that, that one for me is worse because he's not touched him. That one's worse for me. <laughs> he's not touched him. He hasn't touched him, but it's a penalty. I, I, so you're listen, consistent I'm, I'm, too. I'm in the school. Yeah. I'm in the school of, you know what I mean? If he doesn't, it's, it's, if... When the sack doesn't tackle him now, it's no fit. It's, it's no fit. And it's the no, same no, but, no, but Lee, this, 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 this is what makes me angry. Hang on. This is what makes me mad now because that was what people were saying after the game. Oh, it's a stupid decision from Wan Bissaka to go in. Being stupid is not a foul. Whether he should have gone in for the tackle or not is one thing. Did he make contact and foul him? That's the issue. No, no, no the, the, issue, the I'll tell you what the issue, what, what I, this is how I see it, like, you know, is that, He's clever from Elliot. He makes him make the change. It's not a mistake. He 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 teases him with the ball to to dive in, and he goes and he, and he falls over him like you know what I mean. I'm a, I must be blind because I don't see any contact at all. And well, when, he, when there is when there is contact, he, he's going he, down he, he already. Into it. He make he makes the contact by just not getting out of the way. He doesn't get out of the way. He, like you know, uh, and it's I, the same I, with the Neuer one. No, 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 has come out. If he's not there, what does Saka do? Carries on the run. Yeah, I've I've that been changing me because there's I, I think now I've seen the Saka one, and maybe it shouldn't work like this, but sometimes you do need to see a few examples to kind of decide do you want this kind of thing to be a foul. I think you're right. Being stupid, Jordan, isn't a foul. And I think it's more if you're reckless. Now, Neuer and Wan Bissaka, you could say, have maybe put got themselves in the way to put off the attacking player. Um, but is that necessarily a foul? So I I just think, I think now what they need to start doing is looking at 
players and thinking if it looks like you bought this in any way we're not going to give it basically um so i'd rather live in a world where maybe both aren't pens uh, uh, yeah. and, and, and i'll go back to it go back to it right and this is where we've got to get this var thing sorted out like you know if the referee doesn't give that as a penalty right for for the harvey elliott one i don't think var are going to go you've got it wrong I think they go with the with with with, with the yeah with with the so even when you've got VAR, you've got two two penalty incidents that are very very similar. One's given, one's not. So it's not being done properly, if you know what I'm saying. Like because I, I think there's arguments for both for being penalties and both not to be penalties. If that's the way you're going to go. Turkish yeah. pen for you, Saka. Sorry, we've been ram- rattling on, but do you think it is? When I, when I first saw it, I said no. Then I saw it again, I said yes. Then I've seen it again, I said no. Then I saw it again, <laughs> and I said yes. That's the honest truth. I, it, it, we're discussing something that comes down to the 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 two eyes of the referee on the yeah. pitch, and and each referee's eyes are seeing things differently week in week out. Each referee has different levels of what they believe threshold contact is and bad contact and and and, and yeah well, yeah pressure all of that so i just i don't know i don't know i don't know these referees from adam so i don't know what kind of character they are i don't know who you know what kind of man they are just, just out there yeah. every week making mistakes you know whether it's thomas can Hinkle i say one thing that just to the referee? Andy, whoever from england <laughs> can i say one thing that's you know like in the defense of the referee when i'm watching the game right I didn't think the Harry Kane one was a sending off. Right? It's only when I've seen it afterwards that I think it's a sending off. With the penalty, I think it's a, it's a penalty in real time. And, and when you slow it down and everything like that. So I'm using the slowing down thing for the Harry Kane. Okay? And yeah, it is. And then when everybody's slowing it down for the penalty. But full time, full speed and all that. Like, maybe the ref got, got, them, got them right then. Like, you know what I mean? Well, because... In the front, consistency, and, and, and that's why I wanted to kind of praise the referee because I think all three decisions which discussed, I think, have split all football fans. The Sane ham, the Sane penalty, the Saka penalty, the Harry Kane red card. Mm. I've not. They've all been 50-50 amongst football fans. So and if you're Gabriel. a referee, and the Gab, the Gabriel one, yeah, so I'm sorry. Um, all four of them, yeah, sorry, James. They've all been 50-50. None of them are like obviously. Do you know what I mean? One way or the other. They're, and, you know, if you're a referee, you've got to make a call. And his and his position throughout the game was, I'm not going to give it unless I'm sure. I actually think the Sane won. The Sane penalty for me was the most stone. I think Saliba does quite yeah, clearly catch him on the angle. So I'm fine with that being given. And then the other three, he didn't, he wasn't 100% sure. So he didn't make the decision. You can call it consistent. Is what it is, people. Mm. Two, two. Yes. Yeah. Let's keep it moving because we're, I was about to say, well over an hour, about 10 minutes over the hour. So hopefully we are 100 likes over a 1,000. Why not hit the like button, people? Make sure you subscribe, put the notification bell on. Um, I'll bring the prediction table up. Not that there is any change because none of us got the draw right. James still top on 37. I'm on 31 in second. Lee's on 29 and Jordan's on 25. So, yeah, that's the table as it stands. And we've got Aston Villa. This weekend, I mean, um, Aston Villa, Jesus comes off the bench, Champions League, you know, he changes the game. Trossard comes off the bench, not the best cameo, but a great finish at at, a much needed time. Martinelli, very poor, you know, not the first game this season, he's been very poor. Saka outside the goal, you know, debate about non-existent. Havertz, I'm glad you, you know, you, you, you touched in on him a little bit, James, but in all honesty, being part of creating two chances in the first 20 minutes doesn't make up for 70 minutes of nothing. So, no, cool. I agree. So, you know, what do we do? Do do we, do we, with Bayern Munich in mind, do we make some changes? Do we, you know, give Partey a start before maybe starting him against Munich? Do we give Jesus a rest before starting him against Munich and keep Havertz in? Do, like, how do we see this Villa game? I mean, is it full focus on the Villa game or is it, Focus on the Villa game with an eye on Munich now, which has become a much bigger tie. No, I think I don't think we should make whole big, big kind of changes to our Premier League approach because it was the changes against Bayern Munich, in my opinion, that were the problem. It was the the change of approach, which was really bizarre to me. So I think you you go with what's been working. I think whether that's Zinni at left back, even Kivior in the Premier League, if it gives him another start, I think he's proven he's more than capable. 
probably Tommy Asu though. You want to get him ready. I'd stick with Havertz up front, and I'd I'd have Jesus ready to go for Wednesday night. And what I mean by that is thirty minutes against Villa. Martinelli, I think, needs another ninety. I think he just needs more football. He's not looking it right now. He's not really all season. Um, so I'd stick with what's largely been working. The party one's interesting, but mm. I don't know. I don't know the answer. I think he's going to play Havertz in midfield against Bayern. I think he's going to play Rice and Havertz with Erdegaard and Jesus as the front two. Um, so, yeah, probably play Partey for this one. Any yeah. More, any more thoughts around it or should we just go into predictions? Four days rest, rest of, you know, make sure they're all rested up. And it's not like they're playing a couple of days after. But I, I agree with James. I, I said that someone said off. I was, I was mad, but I think he'll play Havertz in midfield. He's got to get Jesus in that team. And I think that's the way that he'll do it for, for Wednesday. But I'd play play Jesus up front in this game. We can't would, we can't get in our heads too much. I, I, I would start Jesus as well in this one. I wouldn't play Havertz. I hope he doesn't play Havertz in midfield. We've seen that it doesn't really work. Um, so I wouldn't play Havertz in midfield. So you lot would start Jesus against Villa? I, I would. I wouldn't. I don't think he's got two games in a Not week. Nor do I. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's fair. I, I probably would, but I wouldn't be pissed if he didn't start. I actually think this game is more about attitude than it is about the lineup. I think how he responds to what happened on Tuesday is more important than who actually starts. I think we have to kind of get off a game. We can't let Tuesday's disappointment yeah affect our league campaign. We are the best team in this Premier League. With It's all, without quoting our, our, our power colleague, Robbie, it's all in our hands. It's all in our hands now. So let's not let the Champions League dissuade us from our mission and the group that we're doing in the league. So I think it's about attitude. It's about how do we respond? Okay, um, click back into gear. We'll deal with next week, next week. It's Aston Villa. They're going for top four. Yeah, they're not coming on. They're not on the beach yet. They, they've got a fight. So, and they're a good team, Villa. Unai Emre is a good manager. We know that. So I think we have to really just park Bayern Munich and, and make sure that our mind is right from the start. I don't want to be going one nil down and we've got to scramble to try and get a late equaliser from the get-go. Let's let's get our minds right and let's get the three points and tick, tick another game off. All right. Prediction time. James, top of the league. Um, where are you going for? Home to Villa? 2 nil. I'm going to go for. But defence need to uh, wake back up and I think they will. 2 nil. I'm going to go 3 1. <laughs> Nearly went 3 1. Lee. I don't, I, 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 I'm probably thinking 2 0, but I've got, I've got to try and make some ground. So I'm going to go 3 0. But I think, I, I don't think it's going to be a great game Sunday, if I'll be honest. I think it's going to be a bit of a sort of same sort of game like Luton, if I'll be honest. I mean, I'm expecting I'm expecting an open game, so I'm expecting goals to be honest. But yeah, two 0 three 0 three one, Jordan. Uh, I'm going two one Arsenal, Villa to score first. Oh, that's a nasty day. Mm. Could be. Hopefully, he's not right. Uh, all wins predicted. Last couple. I don't think we've got any points. The last couple, actually, Jordan did get one point, but I got taken off him because. Yeah, well, I'm talking about points. You know what I mean, like. Um... And it's been said in the comments on quite a few occasions, like, you know, um, I, I sort of said Man United and Liverpool would be a 2-2 draw. Oh, and uh, on. I absolutely got on. hammered by you three, like, you know what I mean? Giving me loads of stick and uh, all all back to Liverpool. I think, ah, falling. What are you on about? You're going to get smashed. And, um, Don't you know, the comments that. like... Hammered by me. Lee deserves an extra point, like, you know. Turkish. Man United to Liverpool too. Oh, you said it as well, did you? I did, sir. I did. Well, so what, we're all claiming points from other leagues now. No, is that three yeah. yeah. points? It's, then, it's, yeah? it's I'm not nothing. It's just what people have been yeah. saying in the comments. You know, <laughs> it's <laughs> funny that none of them have said that about Turkish. But like, you know, it like, is funny. I, hey, I will say that. Like, you know, I think Lee deserves an extra point for the Man United prediction. Yeah, I pick called four nil to for, for some muppet called four nil. <laughs> I don't know who that was. Who actually called 4-0? I've, I've, I've had a shocker the last week. The Man United result and the Arsenal Bayern. I've had an absolute mare, but <laughs> that's why I'm bottom of the league. That's why I'm bottom it of the is league. It is. I, mean, uh, I think Turkish alluded to that as well. Like, you know? I think he did, actually. <laughs> I think he did. <laughs> uh, prediction table out the way. Hour 15 on the clock. Comments of the day coming up. Who wants to go first? 
Can I kick off? Um, yeah. I've got a couple of good ones here. Um, I've got one here. Watching this podcast is like when you start watching an intriguingly good movie, you can catch you catch on TV. Once you start watching, you can't take your eyes off the TV. This podcast gives me the same feeling. All four are well knowledgeable and surgical when it comes to ball and Lee. And they're super consistent with the content. Salute up the Arsenal. Nice comment there. And another one I've got here. Uh, <laughs> love the pod. One of my favourite, but not sure why Turkish, Jordan and James are on this pod as Lee doesn't care what anybody says. Lee's always yeah. saying, I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Good work. We got those two. One. Stick by your opinions. That's what I'll say. <laughs> I um, actually had that same one from uh, Kwame Dukes. Uh, so I'll go for my second one just because I thought it was a, an interesting take on the title race that I, I actually completely agree with. It comes from Lanesra Vec, who says, why do people keep saying Liverpool have done it before? Quite a few of their players haven't. It's a different midfield completely. Two of the three forwards are different. And their back four haven't played as much this season either, which I think is so true. This whole Liverpool have got over the line. I, I've been saying it not this exact group of players yet three or four of them certainly have um but a lot of them haven't and what also was what, what was his name lenezra what lenezra vec and i know yeah. that lenezra is arsenal kev, Ars kev arsenal kev arsenal yeah i was trying to work out what the other one is so there we go big up kev, big up kev. I, I felt watching that man united liverpool guys watching like arsenal last season very similar like you know and that's why and you've you've give your credit james you've always said you know, you know, Liverpool have got a couple of uh, games like that in them, and that was well, one of them. See, hopefully, I'm proven right, but I, I, I've never been as convinced about them as Arsenal and City. But hmm. it's Jurgen Klopp, eh? And I might be wrong. It's most yeah, it does make a difference. I've got a couple here. One from Michael saying, "You can see Turkish doing arithmetic calculations whenever Havertz is mentioned." Yeah, Forever the Havertz. gunner bookkeeper. <laughs> And Bloomy, I, I wonder if I'm going to get added about Havertz today after Bayern. Let's see. Love um, Bloomy says, love the different senses of urgency. Turkish saying it when it needs saying. Lee saying it now. Jordan always cutting in on people to say it. And James only being allowed to say it when everyone else is finished. <laughs> Where's that come from, though? James only being... James talks a hell of a lot. That's not true. Yeah, that's just not Yeah, true. I interrupt all the time. <laughs> but I'm liking these narratives. Keep them up. <laughs> Lee, you got a comment or shall I one of one echo, so I'm gonna go with it. Salute Lee for believing in the potential result for the Man United after the 2 2 draw. He definitely was right on track when he was saying this. Come on, you gunners. <clears throat> when did you find that comment out of curiosity? Um I've got it. The end. It feels that one that's just come out come out of the bag now. Yeah, no, like I've got I it. Mean, um, did you write that one, Lee? No, I didn't like you know. I mean, I, I, it's on there. I, 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 what I do is I I, I see a um, I, I I see a comment and I take a photo of it, and that's what I what I've done. You know, so um, uh, yeah. Bro. We got uh, comments of the day done, predictions done. We've talked about Bayern for a hell of a long time, but I think it deserved it. Aston Villa got a bit of a touch. We'll talk about Aston Villa more after the game. It's a Sunday. Got another, game. Got another one here. Lee was spot on. There you go. <laughs> Just end the show. Yeah, <laughs> let's go. End the, where's Dave, man? Where's Dave when you need him? Um, all right, cool. What was I going to say? Aston Villa Sunday, so we'll probably record Sunday night, so the pod will probably be out Monday morning, people. Monday morning, either way, it'll be out. So make sure your subscribe notification bell on because that Monday show will be a big one. Back on, well, I say back on track. We're on track in the league, but do we continue off the back of the 2 2 draw? And what? position will we be in going into the next Bayern Munich game at the Allianz Arena we'll find out on the weekend make sure you're here Monday love for the love as always and hit the like button on the way out people love for the love peace